In 2023, Honda announced to the world that they had broken the front-wheel drive production car record at the Nürburgring with the new Honda Civic Type R. So what better way to compare the production car version of the Civic Type R to the Gran Turismo 7 in-game version of the same car than to attempt this lap on the Nürburgring and see how... Wait, what? It, it wasn't the production car? What do you mean? So when the record was announced, Honda clarified that this was actually a special modified version that would be available to the European market. The Civic Type R S grade, as it's called, ditched air conditioning and several other items to reduce weight. This car also had Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s fitted to it. And the deeper I dug into what modifications were done to this car, I started to realize that people were actually accusing Honda of cheating, or at least not disclosing all the modifications they had done to this car. This video by Misha goes into the details of what everyone is talking about, and I encourage you to check it out. Link is in the description. But to summarize here, they are saying that it has a shorter six gear and comparing it to other production car videos, it is clear to see that the RPMs are much different in 6 gear on the record setting car versus these production cars. Misha goes on further to show examples of this where you can clearly see that the RPMs are different and the shift points are different. They also go into details on the boost of the car being higher in 5th and 6th gear and the car using 6th gear in more places than anyone else driving on the Nürburgring in a production version of the car. The Honda driver, the Honda car is using 6th gear four times. Well, Schwedenkreuz, downhill to Faxel, most importantly the Kesselschen climb which is not being used by anyone and that's a pretty much a straight and uphill straight and then finally of course also the main straight where we're standing right now. Misha goes on further to talk about the boost pressure peaking in 5th and 6th gear at much higher values than what anyone was seeing in production cars. This could be related to the gearing differences or they could actually be running slightly higher boost at the top speeds of the car to increase performance. Remember, this lap is only half a second faster than the previous record set by the Megane RS. So the theory is that Honda realized that they weren't going to make it or it was going to be very close and they needed to eke out a bit more performance after doing the testing initially at the Nürburgring. One of the great benefits of Gran Turismo 7 is the ability to tune and modify the cars in fine details. We can adjust individual gear ratios and add and remove weight per pound to get the car into the performance window we're looking for. So first let's just see how far off the Civic Type R in game is from the one that ran the record lap and see if we can modify it to match more closely to what the S grade would be. As I began testing, I noticed pretty early on that the gear ratios were in fact not the same as what I was seeing in the lap from Honda. There was quite a big difference between the shift points, the shift lights, the RPMs, and more importantly, something I wasn't really seeing being mentioned by anybody else is that I believe all the gears are slightly off, which would indicate to me that the car also had a different final drive ratio and a shorter sixth gear on top of it. So I started tweaking the gear ratios to see if I could get something that more closely matched what I was seeing from the video. I mainly focused on the GPS speed you see at the side of the video rather than what's on the dash and I came to the conclusion it averaged around 222 to 223 kilometers per hour for the shift point when you hear the buzzer at the top of fifth gear. So here I'll summarize all the changes I made to make the Civic Type R in game the Civic Type R S that we see run the record lap. First, of course, sport medium tires instead of sport hards to mimic the Cup 2s. And then I also tweaked the differential settings by adding a differential because I was getting a little too much wheel spin. And here I adjusted the 6 gear to a 766 and ended up with a final drive of a 4.111, which is actually the final drive ratio you would see in the 2018 Civic Type R. 
Here we'll look at the standard gear ratio of a 0.734 six gear and a 3.842 final drive on the production Type R. I found it interesting that my own testing kind of landed me on a standard final drive ratio that you would commonly see and that you even see in other Honda Civics. Also, I added a little bit of weight to the car. I know it's supposed to be lighter, but Gran Turismo doesn't show the weight of the driver, and I feel like it's not calculated in the game, so I added just a little bit of weight to compensate for the offset of a driver in the car. So without further ado, here are the laps side by side, and you can judge them for yourself.
in the end, just two tenths separated the laps, although there were some significant differences in a few sections. For example, by the time we got to Keschelschen, there was only three tenths between the laps. But by the end of the straight, entering the carousel, you'll see that the gap is suddenly 1.5 seconds, so over a second gained. Fortunately for me, in the record lap, he made a mistake in the carousel, and you can see here by the end exiting, the gap has already dropped back down to only 0.6 of a second. And then progressing through this section of the track, I slowly pull out a few tenths, and by the end of it, I pretty much made up all the time lost on the Kesselson straight. And just before the Dottinger straight, there's pretty much no difference between the laps. Normally in Gran Turismo, you often have a straight line advantage at top speeds where the modeling isn't exactly accurate to the real world conditions. But in this example, I had the opposite issue where the car in Gran Turismo was much slower at top speeds and everywhere else it seemed very evenly matched to the real world car. So what do you think? Did I get the gearing right? Is there anything I should have done differently? Let me know in the comments. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.